On this show, I talk about dropping F-bombs, getting clients, and why I'm in such a bad mood. I am Gary Vaynerchuk and you're watching the Ask Gary V Show, episode 17. Little fun fact about the number 17 it is my grandma Esther's and Xander's birthday, the 17th. Before I get into the show and start answering these five great questions, two video, three regular, uh, I just want to say that I'm in an enormously bad mood. Uh, because the Jets blew an 18 point lead yesterday. Uh, Appreciate all of you that were interacting with me as I was judging Miss America yesterday. You might have noticed that my energy level was down. My energy level on this episode will be down in general as well because I'm still recovering. And one of you, you know, the the hardcore maniacs who watched Wine Library TV back in the day remember these kind of Monday episodes. For a lot of you newbies, uh, you're not gonna be used to it, but um, you need to take, just like my wine fans did, which was, take the scores I gave the wine and add one or two points because they knew I was in a depressed narrative. Um, you guys may want to take some of the advice uh, on this episode as a, uh, uh, with a grain of salt. Maybe d Rocky could put like a warning sign here. Warning, warning, warning. I'm pissed off and today's answers might be just okay. Darren asks, if you could only market on one social platform, which would it be and why? Darren, I picked this question because I'm pissed off and I'm pissed off of people asking this question over and over again. I've been pounding my fist on the floor um, or the table uh, over and over. This is a non-debate. It is Facebook, my friends. Facebook's data. Data, 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 data. Let me say it again as somebody who doesn't love data, who's more EQ than IQ, the overwhelming accuracy of who you are targeting and the products that they have created to target those people, including in-stream, not the right side of a website. So I'm over here. I like how you're staying. Go back there, D-Rock. Not the right side of a website, but right right down the pipe, in the feed, targeted properly, and if you're a good enough marketer and you're putting out content people care about, not an ad, and we all see ads, no, a piece of content, and I know people are tired of the word content, great, call it stuff, I don't give a crap, just something people care about in there when you know Steve, show Steve, you know Steve likes Reddit, you know Steve likes back, you know Steve likes wine, you know, you know he likes these things. What else do you like, Steve? Jeez, video games. Great. What else, Steve? Beer. Great. Beer. So, so, you know, give this man things on those nuances. If you're a toilet paper or your toothbrush or a toy company or a, con, con, you know, what is this? There's a phone. You know, technology company. Like, give this man what he wants around the genres he cares about. Facebook is by far dark posts, that's the terminology, unpublished posts, the best platform to be selling things, doing business, getting money for your charities, building awareness about your cause, Facebook, 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 Facebook. Hey Gary, Nicole Zalanzo here from Taste Daily. I love the new series. So for the past 18 months, I've been delivering daily emails to a community of thousands of women. And this fall, my startup is getting ready to launch its first product. It's an interactive workshop called Victory Rituals where we flip the morning routine on its head. As we go from concept to final product, what's the best way to empower our readers to help us spread the word about Victory Rituals? Look forward to your thoughts. Yeah, Nicole. Uh, I like how you positioned that, Nicole. How can we empower our readers to spread the word. What you mean is, how do we get our readers that we've been able to amass to spread the word so we can get more people into our funnel and sell this thing, which is great, because we're talking about business here. Two ways, there's only two ways. And everybody saw lovely Nicole ask the question and she was very politically correct in my opinion and structuring it properly. But what you're basically saying is I've amassed an audience and now I want to sell them stuff. And not only do I want to sell them stuff because I feel like I'm entitled to because I've given them a bunch of free content on email over the course of these last couple of months or a year, Nicole, how how you've been doing it, plus. But I also want them to not only buy but then I also want them to spread the word so other people buy. There's only two ways to have the audacity to make that ask and that's what that is my friends. You could be doing a daily email and putting out great content. You could be putting out a great show every day but then you come to that moment, a book, a something and there's only two ways to convert. Number one, write a good book. 
in your case, Nicole, your product needs to be good. Is it worth the $38? Is it worth the $83? Is it worth the $388? Is it worth the $883? There used to be an eights in there if anybody was paying attention. Um, so first and foremost, the best way to convert and empower them, AKA have them push it on to others, is by putting out something great that they want to tell other people to use. They valued it more than they paid for it. Number two is good old fashioned honesty. You just need to be really upfront with them of what you want from them. You want them to share your video. You want them to go to your website. You need to be upfront with the fact that here are the things that you want. And so for me, it's putting out a great product that's worth the money. And number two, not hedging your right hook. Just asking for it like a woman. Dan asks, what's your process for vetting clients, specifically at VaynerMedia? Dan, answer number one, do you have enough money? Dan, answer number two, what I'm really looking for to not make a joke, and you know what, the show's putting me in a better mood, guys. I gotta be honest with you, I forgot that that's what Wine Library TV did for me on these Mondays where I wanna annihilate people's souls. Putting out a show with my community does help my feelings. I need a lot of comments on this episode, by the way. I need comments in there. I need, I need comments. Anyway. Um, you know, the, the, the things we're looking out for is, are they creative? The number one thing I'm scared of is we have a ton of creativity and we can do real work, but if people want to follow a very strict process of how they've always done it versus how we're supposed to do it, I'm petrified in that. And so really there's no way to do it because everybody says they want to be innovative and do the new thing and, and invest in the future and then you get into practicality and the first thing that's cut is the future um, which is why so many people lose. Uh, so everybody's into defense versus offense when times get tough. For me, when times get tough, you go harder, not eh. Anyway, uh, so I'm trying to sniff out if people have the stomach to be innovative and do things differently, to take some risks, but be practical, but have a little more patience for that practicality and that ROI to present itself. Gary, I've got a very serious question for you. Hey, Brian. How the f do you get away with saying f so many times on stage and not catch a bunch of f flack for it? Brian, as the CEO of an up and coming IPO company, uh, I'm very impressed with your audacity to ask that question, which uh, leads to my very simple answer, which is twofold. I think the reason I get away with dropping the F-bomb is number one, I mean it when I say it. There's no tactic. I'm, uh, I'm just in the zone. I mean, I was inspired by Richard Pryor and Chris Rock and Eddie Murphy and their styles have translated to my keynote styles. I feel like I do a little bit of a stand-up timing process and I think that because I'm not forcing it and because it's my natural zone, little Jersey boy action, people respect authenticity. The other reason I'm able to get away with it is I don't care if I receive flack. As a matter of fact, I use the F-bomb to vet people. Let me, you know, I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again, we're gonna do it again in the question coming up. This is a platform for me, for the hardcore last seven years fans of mine, for me to go one layer deeper into things I've never said before. The truth is, I actually use my F-bomb to vet other people. I actually react to the way you're reacting to my F-bomb because if you are a person, back to the last question, that is so thrown off by using the F-bomb in public, in a public setting with a keynote, that you're then not looking at big enough picture for me, just my person. You're judging me, I'm judging you. So if you are incapable of getting over that and seeing the bigger statement that I'm creating, well then you're not gonna be somebody that I wanna do business with, invest in, or take on as a client to begin with because you're at this micro level. That's right, you're at this micro level and that's just not a place where I wanna play. I don't wanna play in the micro, so you. Seth asks, what was the hardest thing when starting up VaynerMedia from scratch? Seth, you know, this is another place for me to give a little bit of insight. Believe it or not, yes, not doing Wine Library day to day with my dad, yes, the notion of taking the risk of being in another family business and not ruining the relationship with AJ, confident on both fronts. The hardest thing was actually being crippled by options. 
the notion that over the first nine months, it was very difficult for me not to think about the fact that me and AJ had 800 other things we could have done and did we pick the right thing? I think a lot of people who are watching this are always crippled. I get this a ton, which is why I picked this question. Why did I pick it? You know, Steve pick or we pick, we get, you know. How did we pick it? No, this, one, this one was collaborative. This was a little more collaborative, yeah. right? You tried to give me a different question. I said no. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, I, I like this one because it allows me to give an answer to my audience that I see a lot of you struggling with. It's been asked of me a ton on email, Twitter, and other places, which is at some point, you've gotta put your big boy pants on and say, I've made this decision and you move on. The buyer's regret or remorse or like, did I do the right thing or crippled by options is something so many of you are struggling with and I struggle with it as well, especially with all the opportunities that I've been able to be given. I'm so fortunate that I'm struggling with like, should I do a national TV show? Should I, should I extend the fund by 10 times and do a quarter billion dollar fund? Should I quadruple down on Vayne? You know, I'm crippled. I'm crippled by options, which is a blessing and a half. And so the hardest thing was in 2009 was like, is this the right thing? Don't forget, Vayner started in 09, May of 09. Misha was born in May of 09 and Crush It came out in October of 09. So there was all those other things going on. I was, I, the struggle, the hardest thing was not starting the business. It was second guessing was, was it the right use of my time and AJ's time and upside and talents at the time. And that's it. I'm pissed still. I hate Packer Nation for a week because I actually don't have a problem because we don't play each other again for four years. And the last time we were in Lambo, we won 35 to seven and that felt good. But that was the last time and I know you're gonna say what happened this time. And what happened this time was a lot of misfortunate things. Mitch, misfortunate things that really, really hurt my soul and my feelings. And I'm in a state of sadness for the rest of today and probably into tomorrow. But by Wednesday, I'll start gathering the momentum to start focusing on the Bears and Monday night. And I will be there at the game on Monday night. You keep asking questions, I'll keep trying to answer them. All right, question of the day. I don't know. Just tell me about yourself in the comments. I just want to read a lot of comments from my community and feel better. So tell me something good. And that's just not a place where I want to play. I don't want to play in the micro. So fuck you. Ha, ha, ha.